Today on Variant, I talk about the evolution of the Joker in movies, TV, cartoons, and video games. Welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than I wish they made a mad love live action movie. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. As you guys know, every time my friends over at Ismahawk do a live action battle between two comic book characters, I collab with them in one way or another. And today, they just dropped their latest minute matchup, which puts the Dark Knight Joker up against the Suicide Squad Joker. And I gotta say, it's one of my favorite live action battles they've done thus far. So after you're done watching this video, you should go check out their video. I put the link for it in the description below. Anyway, their video got me thinking, what would be a good collaboration? And then it hit me, an evolution of the Joker episode. More specifically, an evolution of the Joker outside of the world of comic books. So is evolution in cartoons, movies, TV, and video games. Keep in mind, Joker is one of the most popular villains in all of fiction, meaning he's been used in countless cartoons, games, movies, and so on. So there's no way I'm gonna mention everything, but I will do my best to mention all the important stuff. Even with that disclaimer though, there's gonna be people who say you forgot this one or that one, but oh well, let's talk about the Joker. The journey starts outside of comics for the Joker with, of course, his first on-screen appearance in the 66 Batman TV series. He was played by Cesar Romero. The thing that is most talked about with this version of the Joker is that Romero refused to shave his mustache to play the character. Romero considered his mustache to be a trademark, being that he made a career from being a Latin lover in his films. So he didn't shave it, he just had them put white paint over his mustache to try to make it blend in. It didn't really work that well, but nonetheless, I love the show. I also love the 66 Batman movie where Joker teamed up with Penguin, Riddler, and Catwoman to defeat Batman. And I gotta say, you gotta love the shark repellent bat spray. Moving along though, the next time we saw Joker on screen was in 1968, in cartoon form in the Adventures of Batman cartoon series. The Joker was obviously a reoccurring villain and was voiced by Larry Storch. Then the mid to late 70s also brought us Joker in cartoon form again in the new Adventures of Batman, where he was voiced by Lenny Weinrib. And I gotta say, I love the new Batman adventures growing up. I had the VHS tape of it and would watch the same four episodes like over and over. It was my jam. But also in the late 70s, we got the ever so popular Super Friends cartoon. What's a nice little fact about the cartoon series is that initially the Joker was supposed to be part of the Legion of Doom, but the rights were in limbo in the time, so he didn't make an appearance in the series till later on in the show's run. So, the more you know. When Joker finally did appear in the series, he was voiced by animation god Frank Welker. For those of you who don't know, Welker is the original voice of Scooby-Doo, Megatron from Transformers and Transformers Prime, Ray Stance from the real Ghostbusters cartoon, Dr. Claw from Expector Gadget, and so much more. But from here, friends, we would finally get a darker version of the Joker on the big screen nonetheless, in the 1989 Tim Burton Batman film. As we all know, the Joker was played by none other than Jack Nicholson. One of the big things about this movie was that it was the first time we got a dark and twisted Joker outside of comics. And Nicholson's performance was awesome, especially at the time. But another thing that stands out about this Joker is that the movie gave him an origin. And as all Batman fans know, Joker in the comics doesn't have a definitive origin. It's one of the things that makes the Joker so cool, that we don't have a solid answer of who he is. But in the 89 Batman film, we find out that this version of the Joker was once a man named Jack Napier. Napier has been a criminal and murderer since he was a teenager. It was also revealed that Napier is the one who killed Bruce's parents when he was just a kid, and not Joe Chill like in the comics. Anyway, years go by and Bruce becomes Batman because of the death of his parents, and then he eventually finds Napier at a chemical plant. But a ricochet from a deflected bullet hits Napier in the face and causes him to fall into a vat of chemicals, which leads him to become the Joker. Of course, Batman tried to save him, but he slipped. Long story short, by the end of the movie, during the final fight between Batman and the Joker, we get probably my favorite exchange of dialogue in the movie, when Joker says to Batman, you made me, and then Batman says, you killed my parents. I made you, you made me first, and then punches him off a balcony. I'm paraphrasing, but you guys get the point. So even though Nicholson's Joker took liberties from the comics, I don't think anyone would disagree when saying his performance was great. Plus, the 89 Batman film was one of the main things that got me into comic books, that and Batman the Animated Series. If it wasn't for both of them, I wouldn't be here today talking to you guys about comics. I probably have some office jobs somewhere hating my life. But speaking of Batman the Animated Series, which debuted in 1992, that's the next Joker in line we have to talk about, which is my personal favorite Joker, who is voiced by Luke Skywalker himself, the great Mark Hamill. Longtime watchers of the show know I love Batman the Animated Series. It's like my end all be all, and the main reason why I got into comic books. And the reason why I have a Batman the Animated series wall in my man cave. Yes, that's an actual picture I took from my man cave. And that's not like an innuendo or anything. It's literally like a room I have in my house where I put all my manly geeky comic book things. 
Anyway, the series is considered by many, including me, to be the best depiction of Batman and his villains in any form of media, including comics. Case in point, a lot of stuff from Batman the Animated Series was so good DC chose to add it to their comic book continuity. Like Harley Quinn, for example. She was made specifically for the series, but became so popular that DC brought her into their comic books. DC also took Mr. Freeze's origin from the Heart of Ice episode, with him just trying to save his wife Nora, and then used that as Mr. Freeze's new origin in the comic books. Batman Beyond was also part of the Batman the Animated Series universe, and they decided to bring him into the comic books, and the list just goes on and on. But I digress. The point is, the Joker, much like every other character in this series, was phenomenal. Mark Hamill literally did and still does the Lord's work when voicing the Joker, which is why he's known as the voice of the Joker. When I, and I'm sure many of you, read Joker's dialogue in comics, he's the voice you hear in your head. He literally redefined the character and made a whole new generation love the Clown Prince of Crime. It was just the perfect blend of fun, evil, psychotic, and humor. He even has heart, as weird as that sounds. The success of Batman the Animated Series led to the 1993 Batman The Mask of the Phantasm movie which was released in theaters, and of course I saw it in theaters. My mom actually took me to see it in Coral Springs, Florida to be exact, and it still remains one of my favorite Batman movies to this day. After this, we got the Batman Superman World's Finest movie, which is really just a three-part episode from Superman the Animated Series. In it, Batman comes to Metropolis to catch the Joker, who is offered to kill Superman for Lex. Then in 1997, we got the new Batman Adventures, which is just Batman the Animated Series with updated redesigns for most of the characters. Moving along, because we still have lots to get through, in 2000, we got one of my top three animated movies of all time, Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. It's set 40 years in the future and the Joker hasn't been seen for decades, but of course Joker makes a comeback, hence the name of the movie, Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. So because Bruce is too old at this point in time, Terry has to fight the Joker, and man is it awesome. Plus there's a great flashback scene where we get to see Bruce when he was still Batman. Pretty much if you haven't seen this movie, what is wrong with you? You need to watch it. Then we have the 2001 Justice League and Justice League Unlimited cartoon series, which were amazing. Joker made several appearances throughout the series, and for those of you wondering, yes Mark Hamill voiced the Joker in the Batman Superman World's Finest movie, the new Batman Adventures, Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, and the Justice League and Justice League Unlimited cartoons. Keeping the train rolling, do you guys remember the Birds of Prey live action series from 2002? Yeah, don't feel bad, not many do. Anyway, the Joker made a brief cameo in the series during the flashback where he's shown shooting Barbara Gordon, all killing joke style. What's a cool piece of info is that Mark Hamill actually voiced the Joker for this scene, but the Joker himself was portrayed by another actor. This leads us to 2004 where we got another great Batman cartoon series called simply The Batman. I believe it's actually up on Netflix for streaming, so if you haven't seen it, watch it on Netflix. If it's still up, I'm not 100% sure if it's still on Netflix. Joker in The Batman is voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson, and much like every villain in the series, he has a pretty different and unique look. Of course he still has the green hair and purple suit, but he has red eyes, he's always barefoot, and he fights like a monkey. The Batman was a very stylized series, but I think it worked, and it's actually one of my favorite Batman cartoons. The series did so well, it actually got a straight-to-DVD movie in 2005, titled Batman vs. Dracula, which I think is great, and the Joker also has a pretty decent role in the movie. This brings us to probably one of the most loved Joker performances of all time, Heath Ledger's portrayal of the Joker in The Dark Knight in 2008. Not only do I and many other fans think this is one of the best Joker performances of all time, definitely the best live action take on the character, it's just one of the best performances in all of cinema, period. Not only was his take on the Joker brilliant, from all the little nuances and ticks he gave the Joker with his lips and tongue, but it redefined the character for a new generation. Now sure the Joker was already popular and everyone knew who the Joker was before Ledger's performance, but again, Ledger's take on the Joker just cemented once again why he's one of the best villains in all of fiction. He's literally just pure chaos and evil. He will kill, steal, or do whatever he has to do just to make the point to Batman that evil will always exist. 2008 would bring us Batman the Brave and the Bold. This series is known for having all sorts of cameos from different stories and characters from Batman's comics over the years. The Joker in the series is voiced by Jeff Bennett. This incarnation of the Joker is very similar to his Silver Age counterpart, or more specifically, modeled after artist Dick Sprang's Joker. Then in 2009, we got the very first Arkham game, Batman Arkham Asylum. Both Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill reprise their roles as Batman and the Joker. The basic plot of the game is that Joker makes an elaborate plot to take control of Arkham Asylum and trap the Dark Knight inside with a bunch of his villains. This game was a massive hit and led to numerous sequels like Arkham City, Arkham Origins, and Arkham Knight. Mark Hamill voiced the Joker in all the games minus Arkham Origins, where the Joker was voiced by Troy Baker. And he did a fantastic job at that. He's my second favorite voice actor for the Joker, after Hamill of course. The Arkham games are many people's favorite take on Batman, which is for good reason. The franchise is fantastic. 
In 2010, we got the Batman Under the Red Hood movie, which is still in my top three animated comic book movies. The film briefly touches on the Death in the Family comic, where Joker kills Jason Todd, and of course it's loosely adapted from the comic it's based on, Under the Red Hood. The Joker's portrayal is great, and the movie is just all around awesome. In 2010, we also got the amazing Young Justice series. The Joker appeared in a few episodes, appearing as a member of the Injustice League, but he didn't really have a massive role in the series, but I love the series, and he did appear in it, so I had to mention it. Then in 2012, Warner Home Video gave us the Dark Knight Returns Part 1 and 2 animated movies. This is another one of my favorite DC animated films. I'm just very happy it did one of my favorite Batman stories justice. His death scene in the Tunnel of Love was so good. But moving along yet again, in 2014, we got the Batman Assault on Arkham animated movie. It deals with the Suicide Squad tasked on breaking into Arkham to stop the Joker, with Batman working on the same case. It's a really fun movie. The Joker is voiced by Troy Baker, who again, does a fantastic job at voicing him. 2014 also gave us the Gotham TV series, which introduced us to Jerome, who is essentially the Joker early on in his career, even though it hasn't been 100% confirmed at the time of me shooting this episode. But they recently even went as far as removing his face like in the Death of the Family storyline from the comics. 2016 would bring us Batman Return of the Cape Crusaders, which was an animated movie based on the 66 TV series. The Joker was voiced by Jeff Bergman. We also got a Killing Joke animated movie, which is hands down one of my favorite Batman comics ever. And once again, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill reprised their roles as Batman and the Joker, which is very fitting since it's such an iconic story. Then of course we have the live action Suicide Squad movie, which gave us Jared Leto as the Joker. I definitely think he's the scariest live action Joker thus far and enjoyed his take on the character. I know his performance was hit or miss for people, but I personally liked it. My only gripe is still all those tattoos, especially the damaged one on his forehead. I just can't get over it. Like the other tattoos I can overlook, but that one is just a little too on the nose for me. I do hope we get to see him explore the character more in future movies, because I liked what he did with the character. Anyway, this brings us to the last and latest Joker, Zach Galifianakis as the Joker in the Lego Batman movie. In my opinion, he did a really good job. Like I said in my review of the movie, it does a great job exploring the relationship between Batman and the Joker. If you haven't seen the movie, you need to see it because everything about it is great. Or should I say awesome. But just like that, that brings my list to an end. I did my best to cover every major version of the Joker that's appeared outside of comics, but I'm sure I missed some. Either way, I personally think it's a pretty solid list. Also, remember to head over to my buddies over at Ismahawk to watch their live action battle of the Dark Knight Joker versus the Suicide Squad Joker. In my opinion, it's one of the best battles they've done thus far. When you buy a domain name from Domain.com, you get the power to influence and control what people find when they search for you online. No domain extension will help you tell your story like a .com or .net domain name. Domain.com is affordable, reliable, and easy to use. The guys at Domain.com gave Variant an awesome offer. Get 15% off Domain.com's already affordable domain names and web hosting when you use the coupon code Variant at checkout. So when you think domain names, think Domain.com. First up for Wednesday, February 15th, we have Super Sons Issue 1. This is basically the world's finest junior edition, in the sense that this book follows the adventures of Batman and Superman's sons teaming up. Now we have Batman Issue 17. Barricading himself within the walls of Arkham Asylum still might not keep Batman and his allies safe from Bane's assault. And finally, we have Spider-Man Issue 13. Miles and Gwen's adventures take them back to Gwen's dimension in pursuit of someone very important to Miles. And that'll bring another episode of Variant to a close. But remember, if you like what you see, be sure to hit the subscribe button and then click the bell next to it so you're notified every time we upload a new video. But remember, you can always like our Variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related. You can also follow Variant on Twitter at Variant Comics or me on Twitter at Eris underscore Quinones. But I'll see you guys next week when I talk about all things comics.